In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix bad footage. Now, you don't always get to choose the footage that you edit with, and sometimes the client would give you poor quality footage and you need to make a try work in a project. And we're going to look at different type of footage, different scenarios that you might face, and I'm going to show you how to fix it all. Before we jump in, if you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve, you can check out this playlist with amazing tutorials to make you a better editor. So let's jump in. The first problem that we're going to be looking at is shaky footage. So let's play this clip and see what this looks like. So it's very shaky and it's centering around this person. So we want the camera to move smoothly and focusing on this person. So the way to fix that is to select your clip, go to your inspector window and in the inspector activate stabilization. Now open up stabilization by clicking on it and you will see that there's a whole lot of different options. First, we're gonna be looking at mode. Now this is going from most aggressive stabilization to least uh, aggressive stabilization. What we're gonna be doing for this specific footage is we're going to activate similarity. And under the cropping ratio, we'll leave it as is. The smoothness we wanna increase quite a bit and I'll reduce the strength also to about 90%. And then, Let's click stabilize. Now this is going to crop your image. So be sure if it crops in too much, you can just reduce the smoothness and the strength to reduce the crop. Now let's play it back and see what this footage looks like. Now it's stabilized quite nicely and this is exactly what you want. Now the next problem that you might be facing is soft or blurry footage. Now. Unfortunately, you can't take the blurriness away, but you can enhance the footage so that it looks sharper. So the way to do that is select your footage, go to effects, under effects, type in sharpen and select sharpen edges. Let's drag that onto our footage and select the footage, go to your inspector window. Here you can sharpen the amount, you can sharpen the radius, but before we do that, we want to make sure that this plugin finds our edges first. So let's click this checkbox, display edges, so that we can see where it needs to sharpen. So now you can adjust these sliders and make sure that the edges are visible. Drag that up, you can see that now it detects all the edges that it needs to sharpen. The edge blur, let's reduce that to that. And then we can untick this checkbox and now we can increase the sharpen amount. Okay, and sometimes you need to add a lot, sometimes you don't need a lot, but let's sharpen it to that. Now when we turn it off and on, we can see there's a massive difference and the footage already looks a lot better. Next, we're gonna be looking at how to fix under and overexposed shots on your timeline. Now before we dig into that, just something to note, when your shot is overexposed, it means that your highlights is clipped. And when your highlights is clipped, it loses a lot of detail that you can't get back. And the same when it's underexposed, but you can certainly improve your shot. On my timeline here, I've got two shots here. I've got a drone shot that's way overexposed. You can see the cars are blown out, the roads are blown out, the roofs are blown out. And I've got a shot of a controller room that's underexposed. So let's look at how to fix both. First things first, let's go to our color page. You can click the color page button at the bottom. So on my timeline, I've got my overexposed shot here and I've got my underexposed shot here. So first, let's look at how to deal with overexposed shots. When you're in the color page, in you, on your primary color wheels, naturally you would want to reduce the highlights, but let's look at what happens when I do. When I reduce the highlights, it's starting to look weird and washed out and that's not exactly what we want. So let's just right click and reset node grade. What we want to do is go to our HDR mode here and under the light section, we wanna reduce the exposure. So let's drag that slider down and let's see what happens. So when I drag it down, you can see that I now get a lot of detail back in my shot and that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So when you reduce the highlights, make sure to go under the HDR section over here. Now you can go back to your contrast and just increase the contrast a little bit. 
and you can go down to pivot and you can drag that slider so that you can just balance the light nicely in your shot. Now just a pro tip, if we have to go back to our overexposed shot, sometimes it's impossible to get the detail back in your shot and so when you've got a lot of overexposed shots on the edges, what you can do is let's create a new node, Alt S, and we can look for vignette. We can drag a vignette on your node and that's going to add a dark border around your shot. Now this is obviously way too much so we can just increase the size of that and reduce this, uh, increase the softness so that it's not so intense. And that's just going to make your shot a little bit darker around the edges, just gonna make it look a little bit better. So let's go to our underexposed shot. Now in the shot you can see that the controller here is has a lot more light than the edges and we want to increase the light of the edges so that we can create a uniform shot. Now if we go to our primary wheels and we increase our shadows, it also makes it look a little bit weird and washed out. So let's go to our HDR section. Under the HDR section, now under the shadows section, we want to increase the exposure. So as we do, you can see that the shadows are increased and now we've got a, a, a much better uniform shot all over. And now what we can do is we can go back to our primary wheels, uh, color wheel section and we can increase the contrast a little bit. And now you've got a lot more detail back. In the shot you will notice that there's a lot of grain and in the next section I'm gonna show you how to get rid of the grain. And when you do increase the shadows, the grain will also increase. So let's look at how to get rid of that. So, so make sure to select your clip, go to your color page. In the color page, go to your clip and let's add another node. Alt S to add another node and let's search for noise. Drag this noise reduction effect onto our node. Make sure to select better and under mode, let's go to ultra noise reduction. So this is unfortunately not available in the free version, only in the paid version. And once we got that selected, we can click analyze. So it's gonna analyze your shot. It's going to create a sample in your shot. And already you can see that most of the noise is out of a shot, which is amazing. So let's just turn that off and on. Now it's off and you can see there's a lot of noise. And when you turn it on, it disappears. So on my timeline here, I've got a shot here that was filmed indoors, but you can see that the color is completely off. Those walls are all white, but it is showing that it's yellow, which is not right. So let's go to our color page in the primary wheel section. Sometimes you can use the auto balance and sometimes it works and uh, most of the times it doesn't. But I'm gonna show you how to fix it without using that so that you can do it manually if you need to. So the way to do that is select this eyedropper over here. And what we wanna do with this eyedropper, we wanna select the white parts in our shot. So let's go ahead and do that. Once we click the white part, you can see that it immediately changes and it look, already looks so much better. So what we can now do is we can do fine adjustments. We can maybe increase the mid-tone over here, just make it a tiny bit brighter. And if you need to, you can also adjust the temperature slider here to make it whiter or more yellow. So you can decide I want to have it where it is right now and that looks great. So just another pro tip, if you do want to make fine adjustments with certain colors in your shot, you can go over to the color slice tool. And here you've got a lot more control with different colors. You can either increase the saturation of that specific color or you can increase the density of that shot. And so you've got a lot more control over your shot when you adjust these colors individually. Next, I'm gonna show you how you can hide some problems creatively. When a client gives you nine by 16 footage to edit into your 16 by nine project, um, sometimes when you zoom in, the footage looks fine. Uh, when you have to zoom it in full screen and you can frame it differently, it still works. But in other cases, it might not work. So for example, with this frame, when we zoom in to fill the 16 by nine timeline, 
the whole frame gets lost and this shot all of a sudden doesn't look that great. So the way to fix that is let's just reset that clip. You can zoom in slightly, maybe just cut off the bottom, bottom and top parts over there and also just give the footage some more real estate in the 16 by 9 frame and then you can go to your, your effects panel over here search for fill or blanking fill and drag this effect onto your clip and it will automatically fill the back with the same image but blurred next you might have a shot like this which is a nice shot on the beach but there's a little bit of an eyesore going on here. So the client that sent you this footage, maybe they didn't notice it at first, but we wanna get rid of that. So the way to do that is just to crop it out. So we can simply zoom into the shot, make sure that your transform button is active, and then we can just click and drag the shot and make sure that the ball and everything is cut out of a shot, at least mostly. And then when we play it back, We've only got the chair and the beach. Next, when we look at the underexposed footage that we had and the overexposed footage that we had, another way to make this footage a lot more usable is to turn them into black and white. So the way to do that, go to your color page. In your color page, make sure the footage is selected and simply drag down the saturation slider. And all of a sudden, it doesn't look that bad anymore. Same with the overexposed shot. We can drag the saturation and it looks better. So just make sure that when you do use the black and white footage that it actually fits into your project and it doesn't just look weird. All right, and lastly, when we look at the shot again that was blurred and soft, one way to cover up the softness of a shot is to use a light leak. Now, a light leak looks like this where there's like a light coming in. Now this is a bit much and it hides too much of an actual shot. So what we can do is put the light leak over the shot and we can just decrease the opacity like to about 30%. And so now when we play back the shot, there's a light leak happening and it almost looks a little bit more natural.